Hey guys, today we're following on from last week's video on a centralized storage system. Now after posting the video, many of you mentioned that if one of the storage units fills up, then the whole sorting system would freeze due to bottlenecking. Now you're all absolutely right, which is why I've developed a semi-automated system using trains which will stop the storage unit ever fully filling up, and thus avoid this problem entirely and that's what we're going to be talking about and doing in this video so if you do find this video helpful please do drop a thumbs up and if you want to see more don't forget to subscribe also watch until the end for some added tips on using this system but before we get started again I want to apologize for my voice um, I'm still ill I'm feeling much better thankfully but I am very clogged up at the moment anyway let's jump into the video so the idea with the centralized storage system is that it works by always taking the items from the storage and once a single storage unit is fully emptied we can call a train from a different factory to import that particular item. Now it sounds quite simple but the issue is that you either have to collect the items yourself which isn't very time efficient or you have to wait for the items to be delivered to switch the train off or else you risk a second train arriving and then filling up the storage unit again and thus bottlenecking your system. So how do we create a system that allows us to call a specific item and then forget about it so that we can continue building our base or we can go off exploring without the worries of it filling up? Well, after several trials, I've developed a single train and carriage network, which upon a call action will bring the requested items, then stop at the storage area until you request a new resource. So to start off with, let's build a basic loop system here. Each train station will have a single depot, then loop back on itself to reconnect onto the main rail network. Now at this point, it is important to note that each station will have to have a single item being exported, for example concrete or iron rods only. I also recommend at this point naming the stations by the items that you're exporting. Now from here, the rail network will connect to the central storage area. After doing this, you should be able to send the train automatically to any station and then back to the storage area. However, unless you switch it off manually, you'll find it eventually bottlenecks. So to avoid this, what we need to have is a third station, which we will call the stop station for this example. Now the idea is that we trick the train into believing it cannot arrive at the next station, causing it to freeze at its penultimate destination. So now we need to place the stop station so that it joins the rail network following the flow line of the rail so that a train cannot enter the station. Also, don't loop the station onto the network as this could cause you some issues. Now you will be able to call your single carriage train at the storage station and then request that it picks up concrete from the factory, then deposit the items at the central storage area, followed by the stop station which is the block order, meaning that after requesting the items, you can go off and do your own thing without worrying about it all blocking up. Now the great thing about this system is that because an industrial storage unit holds 48 items and a freight carriage holds a maximum of 32 items, it means that if you call the train whenever a single industrial container is empty, you'll know that it won't block up. So the idea is, as soon as one industrial container is emptied, you call the train and you forget about it. So there you have it. Now if you did like this video, be sure to hit a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more and make sure to check out our Discord if you want to join our awesome satisfactory community. But now time for a few more little tips on this. So I thought about having an extra station to actually hold the train. That way you can place the train station nearer the factories which will decrease the time for the train to go to the factory, collect the items and return to the central storage area. So to do this, I would just place a holding station 
closer to the factories, maybe halfway along. And then what you need to do is add an extra stop on the train station timetable. So what you would now do is go from the concrete factory, concrete factory would then go to the central storage, then central storage would go to the holding station followed by the stop station waiting for its following order as it won't be able to complete that one. Anyway guys, thank you for watching, until next time, ciao for now.